Hey everyone, welcome again. My name is Bridges, and in this video, I am going to talk about how to add custom validations with Spring Boot application. If you have already worked with the Spring Boot application, so probably you have used the Spring Boot validators library, and with that, we have lots of validations available which we can use in the form of annotations. In some of the cases, these annotations might not be suffice. In your application, you can have your own specific requirements for which you would like to validate your objects. If we can write these validations in the same way as we have the existing validations, then we just need to apply the annotation in our objects. I have one employee class. Within this class, we have certain validations that need to be applied. And for all of these validations, we will be writing the custom validations. To start with, let's look at first example. Here we have the employee code. For this employee code, we need it to be either null or if the value is present, then it should be not blank. If we need our object to be non blank, then we can apply not blank. But with this annotation, it will also check for the null value. And in that case, our requirement cannot be fulfilled. For that particular case, we can define our own validation. And to define the validation, first of all, we need to define the annotation. Instead of not blank, we can simply use our own annotation. If we define this annotation, in that case, validations will apply on this particular field. To create the annotation, just look at the annotation here. At the rate interface is what you need to use while defining the annotation. And this is the target. This tells where this particular annotation can be used. Here we have used at field level. Instead of field, if we just change it to type, in employee, we would not be able to use this annotation, right? Because it is at the type level, but we are adding this annotation at the field level. The second thing is retention. It defines where this particular annotation will be applied. The validation has to be applied at runtime. So the retention would be runtime. And the third thing is the constraint. Whenever we are applying any validation, we need to apply the constraint. And this tells what particular logic will be applied to validate the attribute. So here we have the employee code which need to be validated. This will be applied by the type that we define over here. So this validated by takes the type which extends the constraint validator. Here we have defined one null or not blank validator. So we can just use it. This null or not blank validator has to be of type constraint validator. Just implement the constraint validator. This takes two type parameters. The first one is the annotation type. So here we have the annotation type null or not blank. And then we have a type T. The type T is defined by the attributes that we need to validate. So here for employee code, we have a type string. If we make the type of our validator as a string, so we can use this validator with the string types. Now implement this and here we have two methods. The first one is the initialize. So it simply initializes the class with some of the values that we can pass from the constant annotation. This is the default method within the constraint validator. So we can skip it because we are not doing anything over here right now. But the second method is required. This is the method that will be called to validate the string type. Here we can define our own logic. To verify this validation, we have defined the employee test. So here we have lots of tests. Let's look at the first test which verifies the blank employee code is invalid. Okay. Whenever we have the validations that need to be manually validated, we just need the validator. And here the validator that we are getting is from the validation factory. And we can just call this validator by passing the employee object. Similarly, you can pass different objects and it will return the set of the constraint validation of that particular type. Let's look at the employee object. So here we have the employee code which is empty and this is what we want to validate if we are passing the empty code then it should fail and it should throw the constraint violation let's run this test test is failing and it says constraint annotation but does not contain a message parameter in our validator we are using this constraint whenever we apply a constraint annotation we need to add few attributes over here. And this is what we can just verify by looking at some of the existing validators. So like we have the not empty, not blank, right? So here we have the message groups and payload. These three attributes we need in our annotation. The first one is message. This method returns the value of the message that need to be added when any violation happens. Then it is a groups. 
So by default, it does not have any implementation. If you need to implement your own, then you can define your own interfaces. So groups basically defines the grouping of the validators. We can group the validations among the different groups, but mostly you might not be using it. So let's park it for now. Similarly, we have other type payload. You can extend your class with the payload and have different methods in it. And in the validation, you can just use the method within the payload. Again, we are not going to use this payload the message, which is what we are interested in. This is the default value that we can use. If you run the test, now only the assertions are failing. We are getting invalid field. The message that we are getting from the default message from this particular interface. Whenever we use this annotation, whatever methods we have defined over here, we can pass the values in the annotation where we are using it. So here we have the employee code. Now with this annotation, we can pass the different attribute like messages, groups, and payload. For the message, we can pass our own value. So in this particular case, let's pass this value. And if we run this particular test, so we have got the positive result. Similarly, for this particular scenario, we have a couple of more tests. So here we have one of the tests that says if we are passing the null value for employee code, then it should be okay. There should not be any validation error. Similarly, if we pass the specific value for employee code, then again, there should not be any error. For both of these tests, let's see the results. Of course, these are failing and they are responding with the error because our null or not blank validator is returning false. So whenever this validation will be called, it will always return false. So we need to fix this and the requirement that we have is whatever value we have, it should be either null. We can just add the objects dot is null and the value or it should be non blank. In that case, we can simply use the strings utility and here we have is not blank and just pass the value. So now if we run these tests, test is working fine. Now let's look at one of the other scenario. There is a possibility that we have dependent fields. So here we have a name, first name and last name. If we have got the name, then first name and last name are not required. But if we don't have the value of name, then first name and last name are required. We have a dependency among the different fields of the employee type. So in this case, we cannot apply the annotation at the field level because if we apply the validation over here, it will only validate this name. In this validation, we need whole object. For that, here we can define the annotation at the class level. We need to validate the name. So we can just define one more annotation name valid. Here we have the annotation that we have defined. If we just change it to field type, employee will not work because now it requires the validation at the type level. Okay. So here we just change it to type. We also need to provide a validated by add the validator name validator within this name validator. Now we need to implement the constraint validator annotation type here. So this is name valid instead of the string value. The type that we need to validate is the employee. So here we have the employee type. Similarly, we can just implement the methods. So we just need is valid method here. We need to check whether the value of the name of employee exists. If that is not there, then we need to validate the first name and last name. We can do the same thing. Strings dot is not blank value dot get name or then we have the conditions for the first name and the last name value dot get first name and strings dot is not blank value dot get last name. We can just get the employee object and then we can pick different fields of the employee object. To validate this validator, we have test cases. We have one of the tests which verifies the invalid name attributes. Here we have name, first name and last name. All of them are blank. So in this case, we should expect the validation error. Another test which says if we have the name, but first name and last name are not there, then it should be OK. Similarly, if we don't have name, but we have first name and last name, then it should be OK. Let's run all of them. So the tests are successful. I think this is missing. So let's run this test as well. So we are able to apply the validations on the class level. Let's say we have same kind of requirement over here. We have email field and the phone field. If email is there, we are good. Otherwise phone is required. Pretty much same as what we have over here. We might need to create another validation. Similarly, we might have other objects where fields are dependent on each other. 
then if you would write the different validators then we might be repeating lots of code we can write the single validator which can be applied on all the types instead of this name valid we have another validator which is conditional valid let's use the conditional valid so instead of employee we need the object type that need to be validated so we need to validate the name and we have the dependent fields like this in this example and here we have just one field let's say we have one attribute field which is what we haven't defined as of now but let's keep it like this so we have the name similarly we have another attribute which is dependent fields and for this we can pass the array because we need multiple attributes over here in this particular example we have the first name similarly we have the last name field what we need is we need to define two fields one is field another one is dependent fields in the annotation we can define the create method field similarly we can also define the dependent fields which is the array of a string and with this validated by we need to provide the validator so here we have the conditional validator this needs to implement the constraint validator we cannot validate any specific type such as employee because we need to make it generate so let's pass the object type here and we need the implementation now we will use both the method is valid and initialize in the initialize method we need to initialize couple of fields whatever field that we have defined over here like field and dependent fields we can access these fields in our validator here we have the constraint annotation and from this we can access all the fields so let's use this field here so we have field and similarly we have the pendant fields we need both of these fields within our is valid method so we can make them as field value here we were validating the name if it is blank then we need to validate the first name as well as last name now this is the value that we have defined within the field and these are the values that we have defined within the dependent field so here we need to access the value of the field as well as the value of the dependent fields for that we can either use reflection here in this particular example i have added the common bean utils library so we can use the bean util from the bean util if we need to get the value of the property so we can just call the get property method use the object type and then the name of the field so here we have the field this throws the check exception but now for the simplicity let's annotate with sneaky throws so it will wrap the exception within the runtime exception so here we have the field we need to check whether this is non-blank so let's just return strings dot is not blank if it is so then we need not to verify anything but if it is blank then we need to check another condition so here we need to check whether the dependent fields are blank so let's define one method are dependent fields non blank and here we have the value that we can get from value object and then we need to pass the dependent fields let's create the method which will return boolean so here we have the fields that are part of dependent fields array so we can iterate through all of these fields and then we can check if any of the value is blank then we will return false otherwise we will return true so for that we can apply a non-match and this method will validate the specific value that we need to get from the value object bean utils dot get property and we have value property name which is s and this is what we need to check whether it is blank return this value here this again throws the checked exception so let's surround with try catch we will not bother about the actual handling of the exceptions for now so here we are simply checking whether the field is not blank if it is not blank then return the true otherwise validate if dependent fields are non blank then return true otherwise return false we have used this validator in our employee we have the name related tests that we can verify okay one of the tests is failing and test failure is because of the message that we are expecting so here we are expecting this message and we are getting invalid this is a generic validator so we cannot pass this specific message over here however we can pass the message from our validator we can pass the message like this and the value like this so it should be okay the same validation we need for our email and the phone attributes so we can just duplicate the validator here and instead of this we can use email and here we have the font 
compilation error and it says that duplicate annotation. The declaration of conditional valid does not have a valid annotation repeatable. Let's look at the interface. If we need this to be reused in the same class multiple times, then we need to apply a annotation here which is repeatable. And then we need to define a repeatable type. We can just get the idea from the existing validators like not empty. Okay. So here it is again a repeatable type that takes a list. The list is being defined like this. So we can just copy this guy here and let's use it. And here we can just use the list here. Instead of not empty, we need conditional valid. Again, it is having an issue and that says this list is not a subset of target of this annotation. So here we have applied the target type and here we need to have the same type or the subtype. The error is gone now and in our test case, let's see the test cases here related to this validation. So all of them should be successful and this is what we have got here. This is how we can add the validation at the class level and now this conditional valid we can use in any of the object that you define. We have one more requirement here and this is the final one here. Instead of one of the values, we need the both the values. If verification ID is there, then we need verified by. So we can define the annotation in the same way as we have defined over here. But if you will realize both of these annotations had more or less same logic, except for some condition changes, we just need a specific field and the dependent fields. If that field exists, then we need to verify that the dependent fields are also available. All of the logic we have written over here. Now we just need one more condition. If that condition met, then we will write this result. Otherwise we will be looking at the different response, but the rest of the logic can remain same. To make sure we are able to use that, we can add one more field, which is a Boolean type, which will specify our condition. So the first scenario is when we have mutually exclusive dependencies. So let's add the one of the method, which is mutual exclusive. And now we need to apply this within our annotation. By default, let's give it a value as true value. If this value is true, in that case, we will be using the same logic as we have used here. So the condition is if it is mutually exclusive, then return this. If this field value is not blank, then the dependent fields should not be blank. So here we have the condition if this is there, then we just need to return this thing. In all the other cases, we will just return true. Whenever we will have this mutual exclusive field as true, then it will have the mutually exclusive logic. And if it is false, in that case, we will have this particular logic. So right now we have different test cases in our employee test. Let's run all of these tests. All of the tests are passing except for few. And these are related to the verification ID, but all other tests are successful. That means we have these conditional valid for name and email fields are working fine. For these fields, we haven't defined the annotation. So our tests are failing. Let's fix that. And here we have verification ID as first input and verified by as the second input. For this particular scenario, mutually exclusive condition as false. If the value for this field is there, then the value should be there for verified by. And here the message would be this. And if we run this again, now all of the tests are working perfectly fine. This is all about how we can add the validators and how can we generalize the validations so that we can reuse the same validation in multiple places. I hope you learned something and if you have enjoyed watching this video, please like, subscribe and share and also press the notification bell icon to get the latest update on my coming videos. Till then, happy coding.